All right, and Nadina, this is for you. And let's test your knowledge on percent part whole and percent change. Let's go for it. In a class of 42 students, okay, 42 students, that's the total number here. There are 18 boys, and then two girls transferred to another school. What percent of the students remaining are girls of the remaining? That's a key word, okay? All right, so let's calculate how many girls are in there first. So we have 42 students total, so 42 total. All right, and out of them, out of those, there's 18 boys. All right, now if you subtract this, you're going to get the number of girls. Now, I don't know if you're allowed to use calculators or not, but I'm going to use a calculator here uh, simultaneous through, through this lesson. If you have to uh, or if you cannot um, uh, use a calculator on the test, well, then just do it by hand and do all your multiplication, division, subtraction by hand, okay? But uh, I'm just going to bust out some answers here using the calculator. So if you have one, that'd be great and take it out. Okay, so 42 minus 18. Come on, calculator, get going here. My computer's slow. Okay. So 42 minus 18, 24. Uh, you know, let's just verify that just for funsies here. Okay, so you got 24 girls, right? There's 24 girls, 18 boys out of 42 students total. All right, two girls get transferred. All right, so from the from this 42, two get transferred. So they lose two girls. So lose two girls. All right, that means uh, 22 remain. Key word, right? 22 remain. Now, if two girls leave, that means two girls from the total also leave. So two students leave as well, right? Because if two girls leave, well, that reduces the total from 42 down to 40. So 42 minus two is 40 so now there's 40 total right because two two students which are girls leave the question is what percent let's highlight this what percent of the students remaining are girls well you always uh you got to take the total number of girls which in this case is 22 so here's your here's how you do it out of the total the new total because it's how many remaining here all right and then you multiply by 100 to get two percent Okay, so if you have to do this by hand, you take 22 divided by 40 and then just shift the decimal right two places when you multiply by 100. Or, you do it the quick way here, you take 22 divided by 40. Okay, and then that gives you a decimal, it's 0.55. Then multiply by 100, it shifts the decimal right two places, so you should get 55%. So times 100 here to change it to a percent. So it's 55%. Uh, our girls okay now if you if you didn't have a calculator you could have do it the old-fashioned way here 22 out of 40 if you multiply 40 by let's say two and a half you get to 100 so if you multiply this by 2.5 you get to 100 which is you know percentage percentage is always out of 100 and then you multiply this one by 2.5 then multiply by 2 and then take half of that and add it together. So 22 times 2 is 44, and then half of 22 is 11, so 44 and 11 is 55. So you could do it like that here and get percentage as well. You can get 55%, okay? All right, number two. Uh, let's see here, number two. A payroll check is issued for $500. If 20% goes to bills, 30% uh, of the remainder, that's the key word again, goes to pay expenses, entertainment expenses, and then 10% of what is left, which is what's remaining, is placed in retirement account, then how much is remaining? Okay, many different ways you can do this here. Uh, now, 20% is one-fifth, and so you can take one-fifth of 500, uh, or you can take 20% of 500, that goes to bills. All right, so 20%, okay, of 500, that equates to 0 0.20, got to change the decimal, times 500 here, or you can convert that to one-fifth if you're good with uh, fractions here, 20% is a fifth, and then you multiply here, uh, you should get 100, so 0.2 times 500, 
All right, it's 100. So that's 100 bucks. Okay, now that goes to bills. So 30% of the remainder. Well, 500 minus 100, uh, that leaves us $400 uh, dollars left. So 30% of that goes to pay the entertainment. Okay, so for entertainment, um, we got 30%. Of the remainder, which is 400, because 500 minus 100 is 400. Okay, so what's that? So that's 0 0.30 times 400, which should be 120 bucks. Just multiply three times four, and then adjust using a little common sense. So 0.3 times 400. Okay, notice that I said 120 bucks. Okay, that goes to entertainment because it says 30% of the remainder goes to entertainment, and then 10% of what is left goes to retirement. Okay. So we started with 500. We took out 100, we went to bills, and we had 400. And then we took out 120. So 400 minus 120, that leaves us 280 left. Okay. Let me verify that. So 400 minus 120. Oh, I didn't type in the right number here. You gotta, when using a calculator, you gotta put the right numbers in, right? It's really easy to make a mistake on a calculator. So I always do it in my head and then verify it. So 280, 280 is left. Okay, after you pay the bills and then after you pay the entertainment, you got 280 left. All right, 10% of what is left, so 10% of the 280 goes to retirement. So retirement, uh, 10%, which is 0.1 of 280. So it's 0.1 times 280, or you just divide it by 10, which should be, you know, 28 bucks. So 10% of 280, you just shift the decimal left one place, you should get 28. So uh, 0.1 times 280. I'm just verifying this on the calculator, so you believe me. So it's 28 bucks, okay? And this goes to retirement. So you got to take 280 minus 28, and that's the remaining. So 280 minus the 28, all right, that's 260 minus 8, 252, so 252 dollars. These are in dollars. So just to verify that, we got 280, okay, minus 28. Okay, notice this says 252. And that is what is remaining in, uh, in the account. Okay, and that's how the game is played. Whenever you take a percentage of something, you always multiply. And notice that I did that in every single step of the uh, problem here, in which there were like four main steps. But three of the first three steps were taking a percentage of a number. You always multiply the percentage of the number and make sure that you change your percentage to a decimal by moving the decimal two places left. 30% is 30 divided by 100 or 0 0.30. All right. So you always change the percentage to a decimal, then multiply by the number to get whatever the percentage is, okay? And that's number two. Number three, painting by Van Gogh. Ooh, increased by value, increased, went up by 80% from 1995 to year 2000. So if in the year 2000 the painting was worth 7,200, what was the value in the beginning in 1995? Okay, so... So 1995 to the year 2000, it went up, all right, it went up 80%. All right, so which means that the 7200 uh, is, you know, 180% of the original value. Okay, so whatever it is here, X dollars, all right. It increased by 80%. It went up 80%. So in the year 2000, with that number, which is 7,200 here, all right, that's 180% of the beginning value. So you got to take this and take 180% of it, and that should be equal to the 7,200. Why 180%? Well, it increased 80% above what it from where it started, right? So you have 100 plus. 80% because it was an increase, right? So you add it to 100 to get 180% of the original value, which you don't know, okay? So I call it X, and, you know, usually mathematicians just use a variable. And then you take 180% of it, and then that would be the future, equal to the future value of 7,200. 
Well, as I said before, you got to change a percentage to a decimal before you do anything, okay? Whenever you take a percentage of something, you change it to a decimal. 180%, okay, is the same thing as 180 divided by 100 because the percent is out of 100. And whenever you divide a number by 100, you shift the decimal left two places, so you get 1.80. I'll prove it to you on the calculator. So you have 180 divided by 100. Notice what the calculator does. It shifts the decimal left two places. So you get 1.80 all right, times the original amount, and that should be equal to the future amount of 7,200. Well, in, in an equation like this, uh, because it's being multiplied by the decimal, 180 or 1.80, you get to divide both sides by 1.8, okay? 1.8. Don't worry about the zero. It has no effect. Okay, and so you got to take 7200 divided by 1.8. And if you had to do this by hand, you, you know, you, you'd have to do this, the long division, right? 7200 divided by 1.8. Uh, I'm not going to explain that in this video. I'm just going to go and solve the problems. So we take 7200 divided by 1.8. All right, and you get 4000. So the x is equal to 4,000. And that makes sense. It should be less than the future value. I mean, we're talking about the value in 1995. And then over five years from 1995 to year 2000, it increased 80% or it went up 80% in value. So the beginning value has to be less than uh, 7,200. So the, the number 4,000 makes sense. Okay? All right. Okay, next one here. Uh, let me see. Number four, dresses and ties. Sells for a particular dress for 60 bucks. Okay, that's the selling price. All right, but they decide to discount it. Ooh, discount. That means mark it down. Uh, discount it by 25%. So it's 25% off. All right, so if it's 25, ooh, percentages, percent off. So if they discount it, they take off 25%. That means you pay 75 Okay, all right, so, oops, so if they take 25% off, that means you pay 100 minus that, 100 minus 25 is 75, so you pay 75% of the dress, all right, of the 60 bucks, all right, so you got to calculate that, so uh, you got to take 0 0.75, 75% is 0 0.75, remember what I said, 75%, you just shift the decimal, left two places, shift to left, multiply by whatever number you're dealing with, in this case it's 60, and you get a value. So if you had to do this by hand, this is the way it would look, all right? And then you should get a number less than 60. So 0.75, because it's been discounted, right? Uh, times 60 is 45. So the discounted price is $45, okay? Number five, a sweater goes on sale. Ooh, sale for 30% off. The original price was 70 bucks. What's the discounted price? Okay, if uh, it's the same sort of thing. If it's 30% 30, 30 off, then 100% minus 30% means that you pay 70% of the 70. Okay, that means you got to calculate 0 0.70 times 70. And that should be 7 times 7 is 40. It should be 49 bucks. So 0 0.7 uh, times 7. 0. Okay? should be 49. So you pay $49. Again, it's discounted price, so it should be lower than the 70. Okay? All right, number 6. The value of a car depreciates. Now, de the word depreciate means that it goes down in value. It's kind of like a discount. Okay, so it, it disc, uh, depreciates 60% over the next 10 years. The value in year 2000 is 2500 You know, what was it in the beginning in 1990? Well, it should be a lot more than 2500 because it depreciated, right? So you started off at a high value, and then over, over 10 years, um, you know, it goes down. That's called depreciation. All right, loses value. So 
I don't know what it is in the beginning, so we'll, we'll give it some variable name. So um, it's Xbox uh, in 1990, okay? It's got to be bigger than 2500, but I don't know what it is, so you call it X. And uh, so... The, uh, I don't know what I was trying to say here. So the original price, I just lost my th thought process here. So the, it went down 60%. So, um, if it went down 60%, that means that in 1990, uh, or I'm sorry, in year 2000, okay, it, it was only 40% of the original value, okay? So it dropped 60%. So that means here in the year 2000, this number here is 40%, okay, of the original value. Okay, so let's write that out. So 40% of the original value, which is X, Okay, we don't know what that is, right? 40% of the original value, that should be equal to the future value, which is 2,500. Okay, because it dropped 60%. So I took 60% away from 100, um, and that's how I got the 40. Okay, 100 minus 60, that's 40. So 40% of the original value this is the original value here, all right, is equal to 2,500. So you change it to a decimal, so 0 0.40 times x is equal to 2,500, all right, divide by 0 0.4, divide by 0 0.4. If you're doing it by hand, uh, it would look like this, 2,500, all right, divided by 0 0.40 or just 0 0.4. Now I'm expecting a bigger number here, right? So 2,500, all right, divided by 0 0.4 should give us a bigger number. All right, 6250. So the original value was $6,250, original. Okay. All right. We're rocking. Let's try a few more. Okay, if you accounted, if the account is opened with a starting balance of $500, starting balance, it's called the principal, okay? Uh, what is the amount in the account after three years if the account pays compound interest of 5%? Okay, so you need to know this formula here. So the uh, future amount here. Okay, the future, and let me write down the future here. The future amount is always equal to the principal. This is the principal right here, P for principal, which is the initial investment. Okay, or your starting balance, either one, times one plus the rate as a decimal. Okay, uh, one plus the rate raised to the uh, the number of of years that it is um, left into the account. So t is in years. So t uh, is the number of years. There we go. And r equals the rate as a decimal. Oops as a decimal. So you always have to take your interest rate. God, I can't even uh, spell your decimal. There we go. Um, you always have to take your interest rate, which is 5%. R is 5%. And convert it to a decimal. And it's not 0.5. It's 50%. Okay, it's 0 0.05. Why? You got to shift the le decimal left two places. Okay, let me do it on the calculator. I'll prove it to you. So you take 5% or 5 divided by 100. Percent is always per hundred, so five percent is five per hundred, and you divide by a hundred, and you get 0 0.05. So the most—that's a very common mistake. People put 0.5 all the time, but remember, 0 0.50, thats fifty percent. And my God, the account doesn't have a fifty percent compound interest rate. If that was the case, man, uh, everybody would be throwing their money in the bank. All right, but it's not. Okay, so the amount uh, after let me see after how many three years. <clears throat> three years is this. So you start off with 500 bucks in the account and multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.05 raised to the third power. And and this is why I think they should allow you to um, use a calculator here because you have to take 500 times 1.05 raised to the third power. I mean, to do this by hand would be, it would take the normal person quite a while. Um, 
I don't care who you are. Well, my calculator is simple, uh, especially if you have the T84. You just type in exactly as you see it, and as long as you know where the buttons are, uh, you're good to go. Okay, the exponent button is right here. And then you press go, and then you round it here, $578, all right, and 81 cents. you got to round it. So 578 and uh, let me read that again. Uh, 81 cents. you got to round it to the nearest hundredth because there's 100 pennies in a dollar, right? you got to remember this is money here. So 578.81 is what's right here. Okay, next one here. Piece of mem memorabilia depreciates. Again, this is uh, going down. This is it's a losing value here by 1% every year. If the value of the memorabilia is 75000 what will it be in two years from now? Okay, cool problem. Okay, so now it's, it's basically the same formula as above, but... Uh, because it goes down instead of up, I'm going to change it from a, a plus to a minus. So in this case, the future amount, FA future amount, that's, that's the same thing as this right here. The future amount is equal to the starting balance times 1 minus because it's depreciating now. It's not appreciating like in the, in the money uh, example number 7. It depreciates, so it's 1 minus, I'm going to put it in red here, 1 minus R. All right, raised to the uh, T power. Okay, so it starts off at 75,000 bucks here. Um, this is one way you can do it. And then you can um, take one minus the interest rate. Now, 1%, all right, is one divided by 100, which is 0 0.01, okay? One divided by 100. Okay, look at the calculator. It's 0 0.01. So 0 0.01 raised to the 2 power. Why? Because it's... Uh, it's asking what would be the value in two years. So this is the quick way to do it. You could step it out and do it, you know, one year at a time and do it in multiple steps. All right, but this uh, formula here that I used above uh, can be used for the depreciating case as well. So it's, it's a little bit faster way to do things. Okay, and then uh, what you want to do is go for it. Uh, Hang on here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me bust this out. So we got 75,000 uh, times the quantity 1 minus 0 0.01, 1 minus 0 0.01 raised to the second power. Because we're talking about two years here. All right, and look at that. So it's uh, seventy three thousand five hundred seven dollars. So seventy three thousand five hundred seven dollars and uh, fifty cents. So they just chop that off, and so uh, looks like right here, the last one here. They just rounded it because they're not as exact like I am. Okay, and it's funny, you know, I'm looking at the answers uh, that they provided you, and their solution is wrong. <laughs> oh God, they. They're not perfect either. Okay, neither am I, so I'm not going to give them a bad time. Okay, I'm never perfect. Just ask my wife. Okay, so uh, number nine, address is marked down. Oh, marked down. See, look at this. You always, when you read a problem, always try to outline it, underline key things, uh, annotate them. If it's an increase, go up arrow, decrease, um, down arrow. You know, just make sure you pay attention to all the vo vocabulary because it's important. All right, so it's marked down 20% in an effort to boost sales. Ooh, that's typical uh, in business, right? For one week. After that week, the price of the dress is brought back up to the original value. It's brought back up. Ooh. What uh, percent did the price of the dress have to be increased from the discounted price? This is a very, very cool problem because it's very misleading. People often just put 20%, <laughs> but it's not. Okay, so uh, let's calculate this. So the easiest way to do this problem is, uh, let me see, hmm. Is to pick a value for the price or for the yeah for the price of the dress and dealing with real numbers because if I do this with variables, uh, you will uh, probably get lost. So okay, let's just uh, let's just say let the dress all right be a hundred dollars. Okay, you can make up any number you want. I'm just going to make up a number here. So I'm making this up. So it's a 
it's a hundred dollar dress okay and we discount it by 20 percent okay to sell the dress so let's calculate what's the discounted price so let's do that so if it loses if you mark it down 20 percent that means the discounted price is 80 percent of the original value so we got to calculate 80 percent of a hundred okay now that is 0 0.80 times 100 and it should be 80 bucks if you know your you know your basic math so 0.8 times 100 all right is 80 bucks so it's been discounted by 20 percent which means we started off with a hundred dollar dress and now the discounted price is this is the discounted price is 80 right okay now it says after that week the price of the dress is brought back up it's brought back to the original value so we got to go 80 back to 100 so 80 dollars to 100 dollars and so the question is what percent increase is that okay so let's figure this out so uh, i don't uh, uh i remember uh, discussing this with you before you take the new value all right divided by the original value times 100 it's always new divided by original all right, times 100 to get to, you know, percent. This is the that formula that we talked about in uh, prior lessons. So if you do this, and say we take 100 divided by 80, oops, 80, not 800 here. There we go. All right, times 100 to change it to percent. Well, let's do this. Here we go. So 100 divided by 80, all right, times 100. This, when you multiply it by 100, it always changes the number to a percent here. All right, and then you got 125%. So the to go from 80 to 100, it's a it's a 100 100. This represents 125% of the original value, which means it's a 25% increase. You'd have to. Uh, it says, what percent did the dress have to be increased by from its discounted price? So you gotta, you have to understand that this is 25% over 100, so it's a 25% increase. So if you discount it 20%, and then you want to bring it back up to the original value, you're going to have to increase it by 25%, which is very misleading. People think, okay, if you mark it down 20%, then it's got to go back up 20%, but that's not how it works mathematically. This is one of the most misleading questions in all of mathematics. It's amazing. It, it fools everybody. All right. <clears throat> but that, uh, that's how it works. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, you can think of it this way too. To get from a 80 to a hundred, you're going to have to add it 20, right? Here's another way to do it too. So to, you'd, to get from 80 to 100, to get back up to the original value, you'd have to add 20 out of that. You'd have to increase it by $20. So the question is, is what is 20 out of 80? So 20 out of 80, oops, not 800, 80 right here. Come on, Ainsworth. There you go. What is that? Well, let's simplify this. Okay, so you simplify, you take out the zeros, you get two, two eighths, but that's one fourth. And guess what? One fourth is 25%. All right, here's another simple way to do it. To get from 80 to 100, because remember, the discounted price back to original, well, you have to add 80 to it, right? Well, what's 80 out of 20? Excuse me, you have to add 20 to the 80. 20 plus 80 is 100. So what is 20 out of 80? Well, you take the fraction, right? 20 out of 80, you simplify it. That's 2 eighths, which is 1 fourth. And 1 fourth is a fourth of a dollar or a quarter. And a quarter is 25%, okay? And believe it or not, that is the percentage increase that you would have to make to get back to the original. I know it's uh, deceiving, but that's, that's how it works. Okay, number 10. A car dealership increases the price by 30%, but then discounts at 30%. What is the relationship between the final and the original? Okay, well, let's... This, this is... Uh, they they let X be the the original price, but let's let's pick a a number here and just work with numbers so you can kind of see this here. So let's say um, hmm, car, uh, let's say the car is ten thousand bucks. Let's just play with real numbers here. All right, now you increase the car by thirty percent. 
So that means that the new price is 130%, all right, of the original value, so of 10,000. All right, so what is that? Well, that's 1.30 times 10,000. Okay, now if you can't do that in your head, you go 1.3 times 10,000. All right, and that's 130,000, because 30% 30 of 10,000 is, is 3,000, and if you add 3,000 uh, plus 10,000, you get 13,000. That's why that number makes sense. So you get 13,000. Okay, that's the that's the marked up price, all right? Because they want to make a profit, but then they discount this by thirty percent. So what's the relationship between the final and the original? Okay, so they they discount this by thirty percent, which means you pay uh, you pay seventy percent of it. So what is seventy percent or 0 0.70, Okay, of this number here, thirteen thousand. So let's calculate that. So 0.7 times 13,000. There you go. All right, 9,100. Oops. Okay. So uh, what's the relationship between the final and the original? So final to original. So final was 9,100. The original was 10,000. Okay. And let's see if uh, we simplify this here. If we, oh, let's see here. They got decimals all in through here. Uh, let's cancel out the zeros. One, two, one, two. So that looks like 91 to, I'm dealing with ratios here to 100 here. And then if you divide both sides by 100, uh, you get 0.91 here, you get 1 here, all right? And notice that if I just put x here and x here, if I multiply both of them by x, I get this one right here, which is choice A. So what I did is I just used a little bit of ratios. I, I, used, I just picked a value for the car, and I started playing with the numbers according to the problem here. And then I wrote a ratio. This is called a ratio. These are all ratios. Okay, I went final to uh, original. Okay, this is final to original. So that that is what I wrote down here, final to original. And then I brought my my answers in. Okay, the final price that I calculated was 9,100. All right, the original price was right here. I just picked a, a price of 10,000 just so I can work with something here. I wrote it as a ratio, 9,100 to 10,000. And then I simplified the ratio. If you don't understand that, let me write it a different way. Ratios can be written as fractions, right? So 9,100 to 10,000. Whenever you're dealing with fractions and they end with zeros, you just start canceling off one for one, okay? One up top, one down below. One up top, one down below. And you'll look at it here, and it's 91 to 100, which is 0.91, okay? And the only ratio that has that as a possibility is choice A. Okay. And I think that's you know, that's it on the first one. Okay, so that's all the that's the first test right there on percentages. Now remember, this is a video, right? And so with videos, you can pause. Okay, you can play, press play when you're ready, and you can also do this incredible feature. You can rewind it, all right, and listen to it again. When I teach myself uh, by listening to other people. Because uh, I, I listen to people all the time in, in universities to learn new topics. Uh, I mean, YouTube is a great resource here. People from all around the world, from universities around the world, including the Khan Academy, they upload videos, instructional videos, to YouTube and other places. You have access to them, uh, just like mine right here. And you can listen to them at your own pace, which means you can pause, play, rewind, and listen to it multiple times until you get it. And I'm telling you, I don't care how experienced you are, uh, everybody does it. And when I watch videos, sometimes I have to listen to it two or three four times until I start to fully understand it, until I can pull it off on my own. So take advantage of this resource and use it effectively, okay? Uh, my name is Mr. Ainsworth, Jeff Ainsworth, if you know me personally, and uh, this is just an explanation of, of how you can approach these problems on your 
on the test here dealing with percentages. Okay, and I'll talk to you in my next lesson, my next video. See you then. Bye-bye.